All right, so we got a we got a controversial one today. Someone called out a foundation. So right now, at this very moment, we have three different opinions and three different people. So how do you handle something like that? So the first uh, inspector, he said the foundation needs to be further evaluated. Then a a foundation company came out and said it needed forty five hundred dollars worth of work. One thing you want to know about foundation companies is they do not need to be licensed. They don't need to be a, have a structural engineer on staff. They can just be any average Joe that comes out and says, hey, this needs work, zero training. Then I come out and I gave my opinion. I've taken a lot of engineer classes. Mike Gandy, you're the man. And, uh, and I shot levels and they do not match. The place is flat. The biggest drop we have across this place is 0.6 of an inch. So, that being said, whenever you, a, a home inspector calls out a, a foundation, you can't call out another home inspector to give his opinion, and you can't call out, you don't want to call out a foundation company. You want to go, you want to first, foundation is called out by a home inspector, second opinion goes to a structural engineer, and then you go to a foundation company, because the structural engineer will say, yes, this is bad, yes, this is moving, then they will have someone to take actions on top of that. We're gonna answer the question, why did the inspector call out the foundation? And why is this foundation company calling it out? And I'm even gonna call that foundation company and have them ask, answer some questions. All right, let's go check it out. And I'm just trying to get more information on it and how y'all came up with the opinion of adding nine piers on the structure. And do y'all have a structural engineer that comes up with these plans or do y'all just come out and come up with plans where you put the piers for your license? So you don't have a licensed engineer on staff? I'm just trying to figure out when you all have this engineer look at this plan because right here, you all are putting piers on something that actually has no negative slope at all. It reads zero. There's actually a 0.1 rise over a 10 foot span. So I'm just trying to figure out where you all came up with these plans where you all want to add nine piers, raise something up that's completely flat. So what we have here, what raised alarms for the first initial home inspector, and I get it, it's okay to cover your butt, you see movement, but you always wanna make sure that you evaluate the full picture. Maybe carry, you need to carry a zip level. It's not required tool, but it helps you judge the levelness across the floor. But what raised alarms here is you have this wall here and you have a deflection crack leading towards the structure and you can kind of see where this brick wall has moved. The next thing that raised alarms was they have a damaged brick right here. So they have two things that says, hey, the structure is moving, but they didn't look at the big picture. You have to figure out why this brick wall is moving. There's other elements that goes on and you can see it all just by walking up if you're looking at the big picture. So the big picture is you can see right here, they cut a palm tree out in the past and so you take this out, what happens whenever you cut something down? The roots dies and it starts creating voids. You're gonna get settlement in this area and it caused this brick wall to settle. This brick wall actually has nothing to do with the foundation being poured. So the foundation is completely separate from this brick wall. This brick wall settled and they're calling it out saying that there's some movement in it, but there's actually no movement on the structure. Even in the engineer's not engineer, the foundation company's plans, there's a 0.1 difference where they want to put nine piers. Why are you putting nine piers in somewhere that doesn't need it? So another reason why that they're having some issues is there's some grading issues in this area. In Texas, we have clay and sandy soils. And with clay and sandy soils, there's, if there's an excessive amount of moisture, what happens? You get some movement. You're gonna get some swelling of the soils and they need to implement a better drainage plan. And with a better drainage plan, you're gonna get less movement across the structure and this brick wall will probably not move anymore. So what do we have going on here? We have flat floors. The difference that they have is a 0.1 difference, point one rise difference in the slab over here. And then they have a deflection crack on something that's not even related to structure. So you have a 1981 structure with only a 0.1 difference. You do not add peers to that. I, you don't even need to be an engineer to come up with that. And any engineer, I recommend leaving comments. And please, let the, everyone know that that's not bad. All right, let's go inside and I'm gonna shoot some levels and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so what you see me doing here is the first thing I do is I 
consider the zip level in the center of the property so I have a zero base point and then I'll go to the corners of every room and the middle point of every area in a room to get the levelness across the floor. Uh, you can actually do this over a pretty large distance but in this case this room this building is really small and uh, it doesn't take very much time at all and whenever you see me taking a photo I'm doing it at an angle so whenever I draw my map that I can see where I'm located so I'm not, I don't have to draw and do my zip level at the same time. All right, so uh, conclusion to that video, we actually shot a conclusion on site, but uh, we actually waited a day or two because we wanted for the engineer's plans. They did call an engineer out on my opinion because my opinion was the foundation was fine, but like I said before, a home inspector cannot cancel out another home inspector. We'll just have a difference of opinion, and my opinion is not better than his opinion because we have the same license. So they had an engineer come out, and the engineer said the same thing I did. The stress cracks that they saw had nothing to do with the structure, and he did recommend to improve grading in the back, just like I suggested, and old houses get cracks. Every house in Houston, we develop cracks because we have clay and sandy soils, and our soils are designed to move, and our structures are even designed to move. So you do get cracks on a structure, but it doesn't mean your structure's bad. You need a pretty large deflection area before your foundation actually fails. And uh, where a lot of people fail is uh, they think whenever your slab is like this, or like this, they think that is failed. Well, an inch and a half drop, but your property's flat, that is not deflection. This is deflection. So if a majority of your foundation is flat and then you have a, a deflection like this or like this, that is bad. So you wanna to try to judge where the drop is and if it's flat across the board. So uh, leading into it, the number one problem in the Houston area is actually not foundations, it's galvanized water lines. So you wanna check out and make sure if you have galvanized water lines, this is actually your big ticket item. Uh, it is a fact, it, I mean, it happens all the time. Foundation companies love to sell foundations. So that's Chris with the Action. If you have any home inspection questions, please like, give us a call and please like and subscribe or watch the next video, you know, whatever. Um, catch you on the next one. Bye.